Are you giving up on your dream birth because you're afraid that something could go wrong if you don't play it safe? All right. Today I'm talking about fear. And the reason I'm doing that is because earlier today I was also talking about it in another group for another type of niche. And the fact is, is that fear is everywhere. It's in how we come to our birth. It's how we come to parenting. It's how we come to approaching our partners or when we recognize a relationship's not serving us and we have to leave. It's how we approach things when we realize our business isn't working. But the fact is, is that fear is stopping you from getting the most amazing birth experience that you could possibly dream of. If you are telling me or telling somebody else, I would really love to have a home birth. I'd really love to have a natural birth. But, you know, I'm high risk. I've had a C-section, I've had an induction, and you know, what if something goes wrong? I should probably be in the hospital, or maybe it's your first baby, and you're like, it's my first baby, I don't know how birth is going to go for me, I don't know how I'm going to be able to respond to the pain, so maybe I should just birth in the hospital. Let me just tell you something. You know very well that this is not what you want. You know very, very well that right now, You're just scared. I'm just going to call it right now because I was there too, okay? I was there with you at that moment when I was told that my baby was measuring too small. That did not feel true to me. When they told me that my baby would not tolerate labor, well, that did not feel true to me. When I was told that I would have to have a hospital birth and it was going to be managed and controlled because something was going to go wrong, that did not feel true to me, but I let it stop me. The second time I gave birth, I had those same things come up. You know what? She's, you've been in and out of labor for weeks. You know what? Labor keeps stopping and starting. Labor keeps stalling out. At some point, the baby's going to go into distress. You have to go to the hospital. We need to play it safe. But that time, I said no. How did I do that? I'm just going to tell you. Because the fact is that there's two types of fear. And one of them is an excuse. You don't actually want the thing. You want it to be easy. You don't actually have any aspirations and everybody else is just telling you you should have this thing and you're just going along with it because you don't know how to just tell them, actually, I don't want to do this. It doesn't feel right for me and I'm just going to drop it. This is like, how do I become comfortable with having an induction? You know you don't actually need it. You know you don't actually want it. But you're trying to find a way to be okay with it and face that fear. But you know what? You don't actually want it. So there's still that part of you that's going to be afraid no matter how many pieces of information somebody shares with you. No matter how many times they say a C-section isn't so bad or that an induction isn't so bad or that a healthy baby is all that matters. It's not going to work. It's not. Because this is what happened to me. I was told... You have to have a hospital birth. It won't be so bad. Lots of people have hospital births. You can still have your midwife. You can still birth in any position. You can still have a natural birth. It won't be so bad. Hey, an induction isn't the end of the world. Hey, I've had a C-section. A C-section's not so bad. You don't have to be scared. No, because here's the thing. It didn't matter how much information. It didn't matter if it was the best OB and they did C-sections, and it could be painless. It doesn't matter. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a home birth, but I let fear stop me. And you're doing the same thing if you are saying, how do I get okay with this thing I don't want? How do I get okay with this induction that everybody's pushing on me and saying it's the right thing to do? It doesn't feel true to me. My baby's okay, but they're pushing this, so I must have no options. How do I get okay with not having a home birth? Even though this is what's true for me, even though I know that going to the hospital is going to stress me out, how do I get okay with being in a hospital? Because everybody around me says that home birth is dangerous and I can't have it. How do I get okay 
with having a repeat C-section. I really want a VBAC, but you know what? My doctor says that VBAC isn't allowed. They say that I only have a 25% chance. They used a VBAC calculator on me. They said I had two C-sections, so it's even higher chance of me having a uterine rupture. I can't have a vaginal birth. I'm high risk. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too small. My pelvis is too small. My body doesn't work. All of these things, you've got a fear Here's the thing about that is it's not true. It's not true. If you really, really need to have that C-section, if you really need to have that induction, that is different. That is different. You've got to get past that fear and you need to have that knowledge. That's a different framework to get past that fear than it is to get past the fear when you don't actually want to do something. Because the way when you don't actually want to do something This is how you can tell that you don't actually want to do it. You close your eyes. You envision that thing. You actually go deep with it. What is the impact that this is going to make? You give up. You're like, okay, fine. I can't have a home birth. I am never going to have a home birth. This is my last baby. Think about it this way. Because this is what a lot of moms say. So I'll have a home birth for my next baby. I'm just going to say this to you. What if this is your last baby? What if, even though you want to have a home birth with the next baby, you have this one, but you end up with a C-section, and unfortunately there's complications, and you bleed out, and they have to take your uterus. doesn't even have to go that far. What if, After this traumatic birth, you are just so terrified that the thought of getting pregnant again and having the same thing happen, you can't even think about trying to go for a home birth. What if your partner leaves you? What if your partner dies? Now you've got, you don't have a partner. You can't get pregnant again unless you use artificial insemination. And that maybe not, maybe that's not what you wanted. Maybe it's you wanted to have that family. You wanted to have the husband and the two kids or the three kids or the four kids. But you know what? We only have today. So you have to recognize that this may be your last chance. In fact, after I had my traumatic birth with my son, my partner kept saying, no, I think we're good with one. And I fought and clawed and begged my way to getting a second baby because I could not accept what happened in my first birth. I'm like, no, I have to have this empowered birth. This is what a lot of moms do. If they've had multiple C-sections, but they really, really want to have that natural birth, they will keep trying. And people will be like, why are you still getting pregnant? Why do you keep doing this? You already proved your body can't work. So why are you going to set yourself up again? Because they want that vaginal birth, but there's something stuck in the way and it's making them scared and they don't know how to get it. I've helped my clients with this. I've had moms come to me who've had three C-sections and have been told you can't have a vaginal birth. And then they've done it. I've had moms who have had preeclampsia, gestational diabetes. They've been 41 years old. They've had chronic high blood pressure. They've been told there's absolutely no way you could have a VBAC. They've done it. I've had moms who are told, you know what, you could never have a home birth because you've had a C-section and they've done it. There's moms who have had two C-sections and had a home birth after cesarean at home unassisted. The fact is your body is not broken. Maybe, maybe it's not going to work. But if you try it a different way than what you've already done and you recognize that actually there were things, there were traps that you fell into that led to it, but you're not gonna fall into those traps this time, it could be different. It could actually be different. So the thing is though, is that if you're already pregnant, you have a choice. You only get to birth this baby once. If you've never gotten pregnant yet, but you're thinking about it, you only get this one chance at a first pregnancy and first birth. There is no other option. If you go through this, and you play it safe, and you don't get what you actually want, there may not be a next time. You may 
end up not having your uterus, you may end up not having your partner, you may be too scared, you may realize that after one child, it's just too hard, and you just don't do it again. So instead of saying, well, this time I'm just going to go with my doctor, and this time I'm just going to play it safe, and this time I'm not going to hire a doula, but maybe I'll think about it for the next one. This time I'm not going to really bother with having this home birth because everybody says that it's my first baby and I should just play it safe. I'll do it next time. Mm -mm. Because if you have birth trauma, if you end up with a C-section, if you end up with that on your record, you now have to basically be seen in the medical system as broken until proven capable. And as a first-time mom, you're still technically broken until proven capable. So how about you just go for the thing you want and prove yourself capable and get it? Now, I told you there was the framework of how to tell whether this is something you really want versus not. And as I said, it's quite simple. You just give up. You say, okay, yeah, no, I have to be induced. No, I'm probably going to end up in a C-section. No, I'm prob it's probably going to be really, really painful. And, you know, I might not ever get another chance to experience natural birth. And I might never get an, a, another chance to have another baby. Like, this is it. How is that going to feel? If there is one little part of you that is saying, screw that. If, that's, if there's that one spark inside of you that's like, no, I'm not okay with this being what my birth experience is going to be the only birth I ever have. I'm not okay with that. Or I'm not okay with this being my last baby and, and having that experience happen to me. Then you have to face your fear. You have to master it. You have to tame it. You have to get the information. You have to get the support. You have to move everything behind it. And I'm going to tell you, it is not going to be easy because nothing worth having is going to be easy. You have to get those lessons. You have to go through the pain. You have to disappoint your care provider. You have to have those confrontations. You have to have those discussions and stand in your power. You have to tell your partner, guess what? We're having this baby at home. I know you're scared, but we're doing this. I know what your mother has said, but we're doing this. Look, we don't even have to tell anybody, but we're doing this. I'm not going back to that hospital. I'm not going to that hospital in the first place. I'm not doing this induction. I know what everybody says, but I'm not doing it. I'm going to hold out until this feels true for me that there is a problem. Until I feel that there is a problem, I'm not giving into that fear. If my care provider says statistics, statistics, scary numbers, I'm going to look at it as, uh-huh, you're trying to convince me to do something that I really don't want to do. I'm going to find the information or I already have the information to know that this is not the case. And I'm going to stand in my power even though I'm going to get your disapproval because it doesn't matter. Because the most important approval you need is not from other people. It's not from your doctor. It's not from the medical system. It's not from your family. It's not from your friends. It's not even from your children. Do you know who you have to live with for the rest of your life, for your decisions and your choices? You have to live with your regrets and your wishes of what was, but you never got to do. You never got to experience it. You have to live with it because you are in charge of your life. If you decide never to have that beautiful home birth that you're envisioning, then here's two things that happen. One, you have that regret for the rest of your life, and every time that somebody has a beautiful home birth, you have that wince. You have that little feeling of envy. You have that little feeling of, I wish that was me. That's not fair. Why didn't I get that? Or there's the other one. Oh, it's not that great. You know... I'm glad I was in the hospital because, I mean, things could have gone horribly wrong if I didn't. But you don't know that. You're just trying to say that. It's like Cinderella when she's like, oh, what's a royal ball? It's just going to be completely dull and boring. And 
then she realizes, no, it would be completely wonderful because it would be better than what I have right now. It's better than being stuck inside all day doing the housework for my stepsisters. I just want to go to this ball and just experience it. Well, guess what? When she got to the ball, she wasn't looking for the prince. She found the prince. So if you want to go for your natural birth, just think about this here. Sure, it could be a little bit painful. Sure, it could be a little bit hard. Sure, you might have to disappoint a lot of people, make a lot of people annoyed and uncomfortable. And maybe you have to make choices outside of the box. Maybe you have to invest a little bit of money to figure it out. But you do it. You have this amazing birth experience, this amazing transformative experience, knowing that you got through all of those hard parts and you have the most ecstatic birth that just transforms you and opens your eyes to everything else that's not working in your life that you start to change and you create this magical, amazing life for yourself and your children and your partner. Wasn't that worth it? Wasn't it worth it for you to go out and do things a little differently, to disappoint a few people, to bend a little bit of the rules and the people who said you can't do it, you said, you know what, watch me. I'm going to do it because I know that if I don't, this isn't like, this isn't my truth. I'm not going to live with those regrets. I'm not going to live with the regrets and know that I never even tried. And that if I had tried, if I see a story of somebody who had similar to me, but they actually went out and did it, it's going to make me wince because I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I could have done this and I didn't. So. Now I'm just going to ask you, where is it? Are you saying you're afraid of birth because you really don't want the thing? Or are you saying you're afraid and you can't do it and you're keeping yourself back from what you really, really want, which is a completely natural birth without anybody touching you and have your complete autonomy and power and be able to say, I did it and experience that. But you know, you're just really scared. You're just scared right now. And I get it. I was scared. Oh man, I was so scared. But you know, my clients have also been really scared and they've had hard parts and I've gone through it with them and I've helped them through that. And you know what? Labor is also really scary because there's a point where you feel that sharp peak and you don't want to feel it. But you know what happens when you actually let go and you accept that that sharp peak is coming? The pain goes away. I experienced this myself in my home birth with my daughter. When I let go and surrendered to that sharp peak, there was no more pain. It's not just about breathing techniques. It's not just about optimal positioning. It's not just about health. It's not just about being lucky. It's not about pain tolerance. It's about actually going through the process and facing your fear and doing it anyway, and riding that wave. All right, so I have a lot more on this. So if you want that, if you're curious about that, just send me a message, or you can send me an email, carly at empoweringmomsbirth.com, if that's easier for you, and tell me your thoughts on this. Tell me what your greatest fears are. Tell me what you're struggling with. Tell me what you need to know, and I might build this for you, because you know what? I'm tired of fear getting everybody stuck. There are moms out there who really would like to fire their care providers, but they're like, if I fire him, even though he's condescending, even though he's abusive, even though I know that he's probably going to hold me down and force these vaginal exams on me, even though he's probably going to force a C-section, he's probably going to be one of those care providers that says, client has decisional capacity. I have decided to override it and give her a C-section anyway. This actually happened, by the way. Um, I believe it was Renat Dre, look her up on Google. She had a case where her doctor basically said, no, you had too many C-sections. I'm overriding your decision not to have one and I'm giving you a C-section. And he actually forced it. And then he ended up puncturing her bladder. Like this was an actual thing. So the thing is, you have those thoughts. Your care provider is not safe, but you're also like, but who will deliver my baby? It's been too, it's too late. That's a fear that's stopping you. But if you, you can't afford not to fire them. 
If, if you go to that hospital, you can't afford that. You can't afford to go to that hospital. You go to that particular hospital where you know where everybody gets a C-section and you're trying for a vaginal birth. You're more likely to get a C-section or there's going to be so much pushback that you're going to end up with so much fear and there's going to be more pain. You can't afford not to hire a doula. You can't afford not to take that birth class. You can't afford not to hire that coach who knows how to take you through this system. You can't afford not to sign up for that workshop, even if it's free. I mean, you can't afford not to do it. You can't afford not to invest that time into learning what you need to know to get past this. You can't afford not to have this be the most amazing birth experience of your life. Because again, there are no guarantees that you're going to get that next time. There are no guarantees. This could be your last baby. Something could happen or circumstances in your life could happen that this could be it. So since this is the only life you have right now, you only have this moment. This is the true for not just birth, but in everything in your life, if your career isn't working, if your family's not working, if your life isn't working, you only have this moment. So figure out what you want, face the fears, and go after it. All right? And again, if you want to talk to me more about this, all you have to do is send me a message, carly at empoweringmomsworth.com. I love getting on calls with people. I love talking about this. I love sharing about this. I have this on my own personal profile on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel. And I, I just love to share this wisdom because this is something that has been in every aspect of my life. And birth really is a metaphor for life. Pregnancy and birth are the time when you really tap into your power if you let it. If you actually allow yourself to tap into that power and you stop listening to all the experts telling you that you have to think a certain way, that your thinking, your intuition is wrong. Because it's not. I can't tell you how to birth. I'm not going to tell you how to birth. I'm going to tell you how to tap into your instincts, how to figure out what you want, how to get what you want in communicating with your partner, with your care provider, where to get those resources that you need. Because one size does not fit all in childbirth. It does not fit all in life. It does not fit all in your parenting. It does not fit all in your body. You know this. You know you're an individual. So that's all I have for you today. And I'll see you soon. Bye.